Hi people, in this video we want to look at uh, secondary and uh, membranous dysmenorrhea, two types of dysmenorrhea we want to look at. Basically, where are we guys? In the previous video, we started off with dysmenorrhea or menstrual cramps, that's what in layman terms. Actually, what is dysmenorrhea? It is um, a painful menstruation. It is painful menstruation, which is sufficient, uh, the pain is sufficient to incapacitate the person from day-to-day -day activity. So, this is the definition of dysmenorrhea. So, there are uh, three types of dysmenorrhea. One is the primary uh, spasmodic uh, dysmenorrhea. Then you have the secondary or congestive uh, dysmenorrhea which is associated with pelvic pathologies and then you have the membranous dysmenorrhea. Okay, so, so far you have looked at, you have looked at primary uh, dysmenorrhea. Basically, this is also called a spasmodic. This starts with the menstruation or just before and it just lasts for around 10 hours, uh, etc. It is happening in ovulatory cycles because what happens is once the ovulation happens, the corpus luteum makes progesterone and with there is progesterone withdrawal, there will be menstruation. And at this time, the prostaglandins are also there and they are going to cause contraction of the uterus which will lead to the dysrhythmic uterine contractions and uterine hypoxia. Right, um, this will lead to the pain. These people will have uh, lower abdominal pain. They can also have uh, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache. Um, they, uh, they said diarrhea. What else did they say? A lot of things the textbook said. Okay, and this can happen in normal women, also in women with fibroids. So there is a small pathology that can be there here. Uh, people who have vaginal delivery, they will not have this type of pain, not much, not much of pain, because this is happening in ovulatory cycles. They can, these people can also have Mittelschmerz pain that is the ovular pain this will be in the uh, hypocastrium or in the right left uh, iliac fossa but this will not change uh, sides they are saying okay it will not change sides uh, and this is um, uh, there will be no vomiting associated with this okay so in this one they, had, they said that no change of side or something right so this you should understand well, what the textbook specifically says is the pain is usually located on one side and does not change from side to side according to which ov uh, which ovary is ovulating according to that the change um, uh, the pain uh, that does not change the side okay then what else we looked at in the previous video we are just taking a recap of what we have seen in the previous video guys so we saw the cause of pain just one same thing they have put in uh, tabul uh, in a flowchart kind of thing there is uh, ovulation that will lead to corpus luteum corpus luteum will make progesterone progesterone will also have uh, uh, PGF2 alpha uh, synthesis and release, this will cause the myometrial contractions um, uh, plus uh, dysrhythmia, plus or minus dysrhythmia, there can also be reduced blood flow uh, which will lead to pain. So, the what we saw was PGF2 al alpha, is it? Prostaglandin F2 alpha, is it? So, here you should know all these things, endothelin, etc. And what is this JZ? It is endomyometrial junction. Okay, JZ. Endo myometrial junction. So, the endothelins are, are going to cause the uh, pain of, of the contraction of this uh, endomyometrial junction. Okay, so that's why you have to write this word also. Endothelin. Okay, remember that word also. If you want, you can remember that this also. You could try and PAFs. What are PAFs? Platelet activating factors. Okay, you can write that also. PAF. 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 Platelet activating factor okay all these are going to be causing your contraction leading to the pain okay so this is all uh, we have seen about the primary uh, still we are looking at the recap primary then we saw the management how will you manage primary dysmenorrhea you will just assure the patient you will give them some uh, analgesics and uh, etc. You will ask them to empty their bowel, you will encourage normal activities etc. If this fails then you will give them some uh, the prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors. Uh, nothing but NSAIDs I am understanding. So they are telling about ibuprofen, naproxen, um, mefenamic acid, indomethacin etc. Otherwise they can give contraceptive oral contraceptive pills, estrogen uh, progesterone combination pills they can give but only for 3 to 6 cycles but these cycles will become anovulatory. And um, if uh, they want contraception, then you will give because if they are planning pregnancy, etc., it is not going to help, right? And uh, uh, then if both of these fail, then only they are talking about going to, uh, to do some scan like ultrasound scan, laparoscopy, etc. You want to in exclude pelvic pathologies, right? Basically endometriosis. One of the other things they said was fibroids can cause this type of pain, right? And then finally, when you have found it, you can also do a dilatation of the cervix. So, I am thinking the dilatation of the cervix will help that there will be no pain or something. Then you will do laparoscopy. You will do uterine nerve ablation, right? You will do uterine nerve ablation, okay? 
uh, what did I say? Uterine nerve ablation, luna, laparoscopic uterine nerve ablation, then presacral neurectomy, P, uh, LPSN. Okay. Also in the previous video, we looked at this um, antispasmodic disocyclomin, drotaverin, etc. Then uh, GnRH analogs can be given, but this will stop periods. Okay. So then, after looking at this uh, detailed recap, now we will move to the secondary or congestive. Uh, congestive uh, dysmenorrhea this will be due to pelvic pathology understand that this will appear three to five days prior to the period okay and it relieves with the start of bleeding so this is something that is very very interesting that once the bleeding starts these people's pain will stop right so this is a pathological condition it can be due to pelvic pathology it is called as congestive right and uh, congestive is standard word that you use in anything in pathology they'll give a pathological report they'll say congestive lung congestive that congestive liver everything so uh, remember this is uh, starting when 3 to 5 days prior to the period and release with the start of bleeding. So basically this is uh, pain is when it is before the menstruation remember 3 to 5 days prior to the menstruation that's what you should remember. What else you should know here? There is some pathology. So what will happen because of the pathology? What are the pathologies? There can be cervical stenosis, chronic pelvic infection. So PID you can say is it. Pelvic endometriosis. Pelvic adhesions, adenomyosis means something outside the uterus is there, oh no, inside, inside the uterus, adenomyosis. Uterine fibroid, actually fibroid they are putting here also. Uh, endometrial polyp, there is a polyp in the uterus, in the endometrium, IUCD in utero. See, that is why once they insert this uh, IUCD, what will happen, the uterus will try to contract and push it out. That is the intrauterine contraceptive device. That is why you should uh, tell them or you should know that this is one of the things. Once you put an IUCD, they can have this kind of secondary dysmenorrhea, right? Pelvic congestion. Congestion is standard word. Right? That is why it is called as congestive dysmenorrhea, right? Because of pelvic pathologies. Pathologies. Okay, that is why this happens. What are we talking about? Secondary dysmenorrhea, okay? Obstruction due to Mullerian malformations are other causes, okay? Fine, so these are the causes of secondary dysmenorrhea. So how will this uh, patient be, guys? Do you know how a uh, secondary dysmenorrhea congestive patient will be? They will usually be in their 30s. More often, Paris they will be. Okay, they will. Uh, this is usually something what they are saying is after all these deliveries, that is when these people uh, will be getting this type of uh, problem. Right? Because what you should understand is whenever there is pelvic infection, etc., you know you have to relate it to intercourse. Right, so mostly this will not be those uh, people who are not having intercourse or before a vaginal delivery, etc. These are people who have who are Paris, right? Uh, who have some pathology? They have pelvic inflammation, infection, etc. Guys, uh, did you understand? Okay, take a break if you are getting the. Uh, okay, now let us look at the clinical features. How is the pain? The pain is dull. It is situated in back, in the back, and in front without any radiation. So it is in the back and in the front. Okay. Now let us assume that uh, this is a Paris woman, back and front there is pain. The pain is dull, situated back and front. So what are we talking about? The pathological one, we are talking about the secondary dysmenorrhea, also called as congestive dysmenorrhea. And uh, this will have, this will be because of pelvic pathologies. Pelvic pathologies lead to this. And what will be the pain? The pain is dull, situated in front and back without any radiation. It usually appears 3 to 5 days prior to the periods and relieves at the start of bleeding. Wait, it makes us a smiley. Once the bleeding starts, these people have no pain. Now that is very, very interesting. The onset and duration of the pain depends on the pathology producing the pain. Okay, so so many pathologies we have seen. So depending on which pathology it is, there is going to be a change in the onset and duration. Okay. What you should understand here, again, there are no, no vomiting, nothing like vomiting or no systemic problems. Okay, I like that. Let's put it, go back here and put that. See, what did they say here? Usually in Paris woman. Okay, you see this. Let's zoom. Usually in Paris woman, you are seeing this. It appears 3 to 5 days before the period. Huh, I wanted to say something. No vomiting, etc. In these people, no systemic complaints. Right? Then, what else? What will you do in these people, guys? In uh, secondary or congestive, basically you have to find the pathology and treat that. Otherwise, what else can you do? Treat the cause. Okay? Then, 
you'll have to do abdominal examination vaginal examination you'll have to reveal the offending lesion then uh, you can do all this and you can cure the cause if it is a unilateral uh, pain okay only one side if it is paining it can be an ovarian dysmenorrhea this they are saying that the right uh, ureter uh, right ovarian vein crosses the ureter at right angle so that's why they are saying some right ovarian vein syndrome or something ovarian dysmenorrhea only on right side looks like then bicornuate uterus so how will this bicornuate uterus the uterus itself will be abnormal is it so bicornuate uterus look at this bicornuate is here bicornuate partial complete bicornuate so all this will cause unilateral pain looks like that's what the textbook says guys then coming to where are we here unilateral location of pelvic endometriosis so in pelvic endometriosis itself is on one side so pain also will be on one side okay then small fibroid uh, polyp near one cornu so there so basically there's a fibroid polyp and it is on one side near one cornu so obviously there are two cornus right so basically it is a horn shaped structure so bicornuate uterus same cornu cornu even in the hyoid bone you have that part of the uh, hyoid bone cornu okay then right ovarian vein syndrome this only we told right then colonic fecal spasm so something to do with the cecum cecum is only on one side so obviously you have unilateral dysmenorrhea something to do with the bowel that's why they told they should empty the bowel is it so this is all about secondary or congestive dysmenorrhea okay now let's go to the last one guys that is the membrane is dysmenorrhea see here we are here in the last one we finished primary and secondary guys yay now let's look at this one membrane is now what the hell is membrane is dysmenorrhea is it there in the textbook at all membrane is dysmenorrhea is um, there is absence of some fibrinolytic system okay so what will happen there will be clots kind of a thing right or instead of clots they are saying there is shedding of shedding of are you able to see shedding of casts of endometrial cavity why does this happen because because there is absence of fibrinolytic system so there is no fibrinolysis because you know menstrual blood doesn't clot because it has fibrinolytic system right so there will be no clumping of the blood but if there is absence of this fibrinolytic system there will be endometrium shedding which happens like the casts of endometrial cavity there is clumping of blood so because of this there will be more contraction leading to more pain now can we relate this to primary or secondary because i feel this is happening with the menstruation right so i have a feeling this is something that happens uh, during the menstruation days so they are not able to fit it in either ways is it okay so anyways uh, you have learnt uh, three types of uh, dysmenorrhea we are in intended to initially start with a uh, single type of dysmenorrhea now we have finished three types of dysmenorrhea okay so anyways let's take a recap of only secondary in this uh, because uh, primary we have already recapped at the beginning of this video right secondary let us start secondary is basically also called as congestive uh, dysmenorrhea it is due to pelvic pathology it is usually seen in paris women it happens the pain happens 3 uh, to 5 days prior to the period and it actually relieves with the start of bleeding the pain is in front and back it is non radiating there is no vomiting basically there is no systemic uh, things okay and uh, you have to just treat the cause So, what are the common causes of secondary dysmenorrhea? You'll have to say the pelvic pathologies like pelvic infection. You will say that then they are saying there can be cervical stenosis. Stenosis more like uh, narrowing. They are saying narrowing constriction. Okay, pelvic endometriosis. See here there are everything adenomyosis, endometriosis. Everything is there. Pelvic adhesions, adenomyosis. you try and fibroid fibroid is there there and here then endometrial polyp especially they told you if there is polyp uh, towards the cornua one side then you'll have unilateral dysmenorrhea then iucd in utero so there is a intrauterine contraceptive device which is there inside the uterus which is causing this pelvic congestion 
That's why it is called congestive dysmenorrhea, obstruction due to mullerian malformation, some other cause. Okay. Then unilateral effetus, it is because of bicornuate uterus, ovarian dysmenorrhea, right ovarian vein syndrome, unilateral location of pelvic endometriosis, small fibroid polyp which is near one cornua, or it can be a sequel spasm. Okay. Sequel spasm. So that can be unilateral. So in this video, we have looked at secondary dysmenorrhea. What is the treatment you can give? Pain relief, etc, etc, etc. But basically, you will have to treat the cause. Okay. Bye-bye people. Hope you have understood dysmenorrhea.